This is the final video for Word 2013 Unit D, uh, which we're going to be taking a look at the information on pages Word 94 and 95, in which we're going to manage sources and create a bibliography. Many documents require a bibliography, which is a list of sources that you used in creating your document. The list of sources can include only the works cited in your document, which is known as a works cited list, or both the works cited and the works consulted, which is a bibliography. A bibliography feature in Word allows you to generate a works cited list or a bibliography automatically based on the source information you provide for the document. The Source Manager dialog box helps you to organize your sources. So if we take a look at step one uh, on here, we want to press Control and End, and that's going to take us to the bottom of our document uh, on there. And then, of course, we're going to click on the Manage Sources button on, in the Citations and Bibliography group. Now, of course, a quick tip, you must copy sources from the master list to the current list for the sources to be available when you open the document for another computer. And this is the Source Manager dialog box. Now, the, man uh, the master list shows the two sources you added and any other sources available uh, on your computer. The current list shows the sources available in the current document. Now a check mark next to a source indicates that the source is cited inside the document. And you use the tools in the Source Manager dialog box to add, edit, and delete sources from the list. And to copy sources between the master and current list. Now the sources appear in the current list will appear in the bibliography. So the first thing we want to do is, is that we actually want to remove uh, a source. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Mary Baker source, which is My Adventures in Africa uh, from 1995. Uh, you want to click on this in your current list. And of course a preview of the citation uh, is down here on the bottom. Uh, and you, uh, of course that's in the MLA style. And we do not want to use this source. Of course, yours may have some different information than what you see here, but you wanted to make sure that you choose the Mary Baker option. And we're going to click on the Delete button. And what that's going to do is that's going to remove the source from the current list. Once we have that done, we're going to click on our Close button here. And that's going to close down uh, the Manage Sources uh, dialog box. And then we want to click on the Bibliography button up here. And of course, we have a couple different options. We have our Bibliography, References, and Works Cited. We're going, in this case, we're going to click on the References, uh, which uh, it's an automatic bibliography that's going to include all of the sources associated with the document. So if we click on this, uh, it takes just a moment here, and it's going to input in this bibliography at the insertion point uh, on there. And of course, if we scroll up a little bit, we can see that this field is going to be named References, uh, or labeled References, I should say. And of course the bibliography includes all the sources associated with this document and it's formatted in the MLA style for bibliographies. Now the text in the bibliography field is formatted with the default style of text. Uh, so it may be a little bit different than our other text, which if we take a look it looks a little bit larger. So in step five, what we're going to do is, well first of all we're going to select references here. And of course our mini toolbar will appear. And what we're going to do is, is that we're going to format this text. First of all, uh, we're going to take this text and we're going to format it in the Berlin Sans FB Demi. Then next, we're going to change the font color of this, and we're going to change this here to the accent uh, blue accent 5, which is over here underneath the theme colors. It's this one right here. So we're going to click on that and change the color of it. And then once we do that, we're going to deselect references, and we're going to select the remaining text inside of the bibliography. Uh, once we have that, uh, we'll just select that text there, and I'll use my mini toolbar here. Of course, you can also use the Home tab as well. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to change the font size of this to 11. So it's going to make it the exact same size um, as the rest of the report. Once we have that, we're going to select outside of the references uh, object here, which you can tell it's all one unit. And of course, if we would go and add more uh, information, more citations, uh, it would add it into our bibliography as well. 
Uh, but generally, you don't want to create the bibliography until you're finished with your report. Uh, that way, so you don't have to worry about it adding uh, on there and making your document look a little bit different. So once we have that, we now have our references page here. And uh, of course, don't be concerned if the list of sources become gray when you select the heading bibliography. This simply indicates that the bibliography field is active. Now text that is selected uh, is highlighted in dark gray. Once we have this, we want to press our control end and uh, excuse me, control end, and that's going to take us to uh, the information below the bibliography. And this is where you want to type in your name uh, into your document. Once you have that, we can click on our view tab, and we want to take a look at the multiple pages. And you can see that we took our original five-page document and we've moved this to a four-page document that looks very professional, very neat, uh, has uh, on there uh, a table, has our uh, footnotes, has our references as well. So, I mean, yeah, this looks like a very professional document. It's organized into sections uh, on there. So this is what uh, a difference is between a regular user of Word and a more power user of Word is being able to take a, a document and format it in this way in which it looks very professional. Once you have this, uh, scroll up and down uh, to view every page of the report. Make sure that your name is on it. Go ahead and uh, click on Save uh, to save your document and then go ahead and submit your document to, to Course Sites uh, on there. Uh, then you can go ahead and exit out of this document. Uh, before we close out this video, uh, just a little uh, mention about working with web sources. And just remember that publications found on the web can be challenging to document. Many websites can be accessed or accessed under multiple domains, URLs do change, and electronic publications are often updated frequently, which uh, making each visit to a web uh, site potentially unique. And for these reasons, it's best to rely on the author, title, and publication information for a web page. Uh, or a web publication when citing it as a source in a research document. Now if possible, you can include a URL as a supplementary information only, along with the date the website uh, was last updated and the date you accessed the website. Since websites are often removed, it's also a good idea to download or print any web source you use so that it can be verified later. Uh, that's just some good tips and hints about uh, using web sources because uh, going to the library and pulling up some books is uh, turning to be one of the things of the past. Still very useful uh, tool and research and everything, uh, but most people do turn to the web when they're looking for the res uh, resources and so keep those items in mind when you are citing those uh, web sources. And that concludes this series of videos uh, about Word 2013 Unit D. Uh, you're ready to move on to the assignments, so remember to submit this to Course Sites underneath the walkthrough, and you're ready to move on to the assignments.